you're happy and well now on to our video on determination of sex determination of the sex of an organism now like we mentioned in the previous video human beings are dioecious organisms that's to say they have different sexes male and female now there are some organisms plants especially that are not dioecious so you know they just have one sex okay now so human beings like i said are dioecious organisms you have the males you have the females and we also mentioned in the previous video that human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes 22 being homologous and the 23rd being non-homologous 22 being the same in both males and females but the 23rd being different in males and females okay now we also mentioned that in the females you have x x homologous chromosomes uh, sex chromosomes so the x cell that's released to be fertilized by the sperm cell is x okay now i have to explain this a little further okay so every cell in our body occurs in the diploid have uh, their chromosomes in the diploid form every cell in our body apart from the sex cell apart from the x cell and the sperm cell all other cells in our body have the diploid number of chromosomes that is to say all the cells in our body have 23 pairs of chromosomes or 46 chromosomes but not so with the sex cell not so with the x cell and the sperm cell now these have the haploid number of chromosomes so in the x cell and in the sperm cell what you find is 23 chromosomes not 23 pairs of chromosomes in the x cell and also in the sperm cell that's going to fertilize the x cell you have 23 chromosomes not 23 pairs of chromosomes now have you ever thought to wonder why this haploid number why are they having half the number that other cells have this is because when there's fusion of the egg cell and the sperm cell at fertilization then the diploid number is restored okay so the egg cell has the haploid number of chromosomes 23 and then the sperm cell has a haploid number of chromosomes 23 and when they get fused together the haploid the diploid number of 23 pairs or 46 chromosome is restored now with chromosomes having any extra chromosome results in a lot of abnormalities we are going to discuss that in the future that's why it's important that the number of chromosomes is maintained in the living organism okay so human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes of 46 chromosomes and all the cells in our body have the diploid number of chromosomes that's 23 pairs of 46 except the sex cell now the sex cell have the haploid number 23 chromosomes not 23 pairs and during fertilization the diploid number is restored i hope you're following me so far now to determination of the sex of an individual and this is very important for us africans because what we used to have in our culture is a situation where if a couple are having one particular sex of a child over and over again, for instance, they're having female children over and over again, and uh, there's no male child, most times the, the husband blames it on the wives and say, why can't you produce a male child? Why can't you give me a male child? You know, and if it's the other way around, they have male children, they need a female child, the husband, some husbands will say, why can't you give me a um, a female child and this is somewhat responsible for having many babies because my mother she had six girls you know and i imagine because she was trying to get a boy having a male child in the past was quite important in africa and in some parts of africa in some parts of nigeria till today it's really important to have a male child to have both sexes of children now we want to disabuse your mind of blaming uh, the absence of one sex of the child on the woman because science genetics has brought us to understand that if woman does not determine the sex of the child she does not have what it takes now the woman like i said has homologous genes so her um sex chromosome is homologous xx when the diploid number is restored she will have xx now when there's a cell division and the haploid number is being determined she will have 
the 23rd chromosome as X. She can never have a Y chromosome. Now, but the male, the father, the husband, has a non-homologous pair of chromosome in the 23rd pair. So he has an X and a Y, like heterozygous chromosomes, an X and a Y in the diploid form. Now, when the haploid form is determined, the male can either have an X chromosome in a sperm or a Y chromosome in a sperm. So the male can have either X chromosome or Y chromosome in the sperm cell. Remember, the sperm cell has the haploid number of chromosomes. So the 23rd pair would either be X or Y. The two can't occur together, except in an abnormal case. Now, the woman, when is in the homozygous, homozygous form, when is in the diploid form, she has XX. And when it's a haploid form, ready to go and be fertilized, she has only X. She can never have Y chromosome except in an abnormal situation. Now, the chromosome that determines the sex of the organism is the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome determines the sex of the organism. And the Y chromosome is only found in males. For sex chromosomes, the male are heterozygous. They have X. Y, okay, and then in the haploid form before fertilization, there will be cell division that will ensure that every sperm cell either has an X sex chromosome or a Y sex chromosome in the males. Now the female have homozygous chromosomes for sex, so they have XX in the diploid form, and when the egg cell is ready to be sent for fertilization, it will have the haploid number. And so it will have an X chromosome, never a Y. Now when there's fusion, if the male or the sperm cell that came from the male or the husband, if it contains an X chromosome, that X chromosome from the male will fuse with the X chromosome from the female. You have XX in the diploid form and the child will be a girl. Now if the sperm cell that came from the male has a Y chromosome, when it fuses with the X cell that always has an X chromosome, if the sperm cell is containing a Y chromosome and it fuses with the X from the X cell from the female, then you have XY in the diploid form and that child would be a boy. I don't know if you followed through this. Now, what determines the sex of an individual is the sex chromosome. Now, in the male and the female, the sex chromosomes differ. The sex chromosome from the, for the female is homologous or homozygous and is presented as XX. The sex chromosomes for the male, heterozygous, represented as XY. Now, before fertilization, there will be cell division, which we're also going to discuss in the future, so that every sperm cell and X cell will contain one of these chromosomes, either X in the case of the female, because it has XX and can only contain X. But in the case of the male, it has X, Y, and when it divides into two, one sperm cell will take X, one sperm cell will take Y. Now, when the sperm cell fuses with the X cell, if it was an X coming from the male to fuse with an X from the female, you have XX, and that would be a girl child. Now, if you had a Y chromosome coming from the male and uh, fusing with an X chromosome from the female, you have X, Y, you have a boy child. The sex of a child is determined by the father, never the mother. Now, that's what I'm talking about when you have a normal situation, where you have a husband being male and the wife or woman, of course, the other way around, children cannot be produced. So, well, that wasn't uh, relevant at all. Okay, so, but now you have the male determining the sex of the child. You have the father determining the sex of the child because he can give X or Y. The woman can only give X no matter the situation. So the woman does not determine the sex of the child. So if it's a male child or it's a female child, the person who has determined that, who has caused that, as the case may be, is the father, never the mother. I hope I'm really clear on this so that I can begin, begin to change, you know, the understanding of some people who keep saying, my wife couldn't give me a female child, I'll go marry another woman, and you marry another one, and another one, and another one. And if you're lucky because the whole of genetics is a chance thing, you can marry another woman and get the sex you want. But if you're unlucky, even if you marry 50 women, you will still have the same sex because you determine the sex of the child, not 
the mother. That's all we're going to take for today. If you haven't subscribed to Psychology Sanity TV, please click on that subscribe button and also click on the bell sign to enable notification and check us uh, so you can be notified of our future videos. We'll be here again soon on your screen. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Have yourself a very beautiful day out there. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>